Good morning and welcome back to Hiking with Kathleen. In today's video, I'm going to show you the footage that I've been able to capture of the total eclipse of the sun from Port Stanley, Ontario. But also in this video, I went on a hike yesterday, brought my camera along, have some beautiful footage of deer, but also some distressing footage of a great horned owlet, kind of under attack. Anyway, stay with me.
I just discovered an owl nest. Because um, I'm listening to the crows. The crows are doing some mobbing behavior. I was preoccupied with the deer. Now, I'm going to film an owlet. So I've stayed at this spot for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so. Right now the crows have sort of died off. I think there was only maybe one or two crows that were actually uh, in on this um, uh, investigation because it wasn't yet an attack on the owlet. The problem is um, all animals, because of their need to eat, they... Um, if they are predators, they'll be killing other animals. And we don't typically see crows as predators. They're omnivores. They eat plant matter and animal matter. Um, but this is a really great time of year where there's a variety of food available. And that comes in the form of eggs and nestlings um, and young, you know, of other animals too. So this crow was sort of uh, shouldering the burden and chasing the parents away. There were a couple more crows that were helping out with that, but now that that crow or group of crows knows where the nestling is, it's not going to have a good result. Uh, the nestling is in itself defenseless. It's, um, yeah, it'd be about crow-sized, but it's uh, not yet a uh, killing machine, I guess I should say, or I could say. Uh, it hasn't learned how to... Uh, you know, capture prey and things of that nature. But crows want to clean up the area before they are at risk of other predators. And so I think that's a little bit of what's going on is they want to kill the young of predatory birds. Uh, even though owls don't typically zero in on crows, they, um, yeah, they'll eat whatever they can catch, especially during the season where they have nestlings to feed. So I was focusing on the young and I was focusing on whether or not we would see uh, predatory action by the crows, um, but they've dissipated for now, but guaranteed they will return. And it's when maybe the parents are a little less aware. And the reason I know that is because um, we had, um, we had a, a dove nest, morning doves that nested right outside of our front window um, about a year and a half ago. And I was filming the behavior, not in the nest. I couldn't actually see the eggs or nestlings or anything like that. But the uh, morning doves got used to me just being on the other side of the window pane. Um, I didn't do anything more intrusive than that. And then one day, crows discovered that nest. And morning doves are not really strong defenders. They're, I guess, what we would call peaceful birds. They're, they would just move away. 
So I chased the crows away the first time I saw that happen. And it turns out it was just a couple days later that the crows returned and whatever was in the nest, we figure was probably nestlings, uh, but we couldn't see because of the angle. The nest was just above where I could shoot from the window. So I used a, a GoPro and looked inside and there was nothing inside. So it didn't look like broken eggshells or anything like that. So it probably was that the crows had come back and uh, eaten the fledglings. So it's harsh. Nature is harsh. But we all have a need to survive and that's what's going on here. So anyway, we're going to move on and uh, see what else there is in the forest today. So I, I left that situation with regards to the great horned owl. I was able to film a distant shot of the parent. Um, I saw the profile of the parent in a nearby tree. And uh, so anyway, that kind of confirms that that was a great horned owl, owlet, that I was filming in the tree. Um, anyway, things seem to be peaceful right now, so, uh, but I, I don't expect that one to go unnoticed because now that the crows know where that nest is, uh, they'll return. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I also had a chance to see some adult bald eagles. There is a, a group of three of them just riding the wind thermals. And so I had to take a closer look till I saw the white head and the white tail um, that they were flying around together, as opposed to being confused with the uh, profile of a turkey vulture. Turkey vultures ride the wind thermals, but they're wings sort of take on a bit of a v-shape a gentle v-shape so that helps to distinguish them plus they're uh, dark colored with uh, light underparts so um i'm now heading down towards the thames river and my hope is that i'll have a chance to hear some uh, maybe some breeding frogs you can hear them because they make their sort of a, a singing song that a croak is, is what some people might call the sounds. Some of them can actually be almost indistinguishable from bird song. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll see if I can uh, capture some of that for you as I continue on my hike today through the forest. The temperature started off at about minus one degree and I think by the time I wrap this up today, it'll be around eight or nine degrees um, heading on up uh, this afternoon. So, I mean, that's a great thing. That also makes it possible to see basking snakes. So I hope that uh, when I say basking, as in snakes basking in the sun in order to raise their body temperature. So that's another thing I'm keeping my eye out for. So anyway, you're gonna join me. I'm gonna take you right along in this. So this morning is April 8th, 2024. This is the day of the total eclipse. And Shannon and I have driven down to Port Stanley, Ontario, where we are hoping to get a good view of the eclipsing sun. We're right now, it's about eight o'clock in the morning and our total eclipse time is supposed to be about 3.15 in the afternoon.
Okay, so I'm just checking in with you again. Uh, now that we're a little closer to showtime, um, about four hours later, we did have some precipitation, and now it's a matter of the, the sky has cleared up. So it looks like it's gonna be great conditions for all of us to witness the solar eclipse. The parking lot is filling up. I got a really assort interesting assortment of individuals that have come out to see this phenomenon today. Uh, when Shannon and I arrived here uh, at about eight o'clock, we were among the few people that were in the parking lot. And so the parking lot is starting to fill up. People are milling around, getting themselves some lunch and uh, just roaming the grounds and being able to sort of uh, get familiar with the area as they get ready for this uh, time that's ahead of us. So our total or uh, max eclipse time is at 317. So we've got another few hours to wait. Yeah, so we were just remarking on the fact that it's cool. I mean, there'll be lots of people that'll get really fantastic photos of this particular phenomenon. I'll get some video footage. Uh, I've taken a couple of pictures as well. But it's just really exciting to be a part of this and, and everybody else is enthused. Everybody who's here is enthused. Uh, it's an area where we're all here for the same reason. All right? Yeah. It's nice that it's such a beautiful day. People are here in their family groups. Uh, the kids were out of school. Yeah, that's right. The kids got the day off school. Um, people have their picnics here. And it's happening gradually, right? So we all have a chance to take it in over a long period of time because the moon is moving more and more in front of the sun. Yeah, really cool. I know you're your viewers think you're hardcore, but the princess has requested a pad. Right? And not sponsored by Thermarest. But here's your pad. Is this, is this good enough for you? You do good work. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> hey, there's a bit of a 
Okay, so we're almost on the doorstep of that totality now. So we're getting pretty excited. Got a couple cameras running. This one is going to video the moment. And the other camera, I'm gonna have it video the people in the moment and how dark it'll get. So we're really quite, we're finding it's a kind of an unusual color of the sky right now. So it's very exciting because we're gonna be here with everybody else who's gonna be experiencing this for their first time in their lifetime. So here you are, you're in the moment of almost full totality. Yeah, it's getting a funny color out here. Yeah. It's looking a little eerie. It is. Because we're on Lake Erie. And you didn't even think about that in advance. You know, I really didn't. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. We are almost there. And then it's like somebody's gonna be pulling the light switch and pulling the chain of the light switch and shutting it off. Be able to see the sun for its real self. Oh my God, look at that, eh? This is so cool. It's so weird. It's so weird. Got a couple cameras on the go. This one that's actually going to film the eclipse and the other is going to basically film the people. Wow. It's just such a weird color right now. Darkness is almost upon us. Wow.
amazing. You can see there are solar flares. Oh my god, it's amazing! Okay, so this is uh, sort of our final thoughts as we wrap up today's video and uh, you know it was a really cool experience being able to see this total solar eclipse. Uh, what were your impressions? It was really, it became really spooky when it started to get dusk. Like it was, yeah, it was hard to explain. It just, the color just faded and then it went dark in the middle of the, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Well, and the other thing is, as people were pointing out, the lights went on around the pier. 
um, you know, the ones that are help, here to help the ships navigate. Yeah, the lighthouse. So the lighthouse, but also all along the pier there. Yeah. So anyway, that was a really cool thing to see that it, the solar eclipse faked out everything, right? But um, yeah, it was a really neat experience to experience it firsthand. I know you will experience it by the video that, uh, that I shot and some of the photos. Um, and hopefully you had a chance to experience it firsthand too. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us in today's video. Uh, we're glad that you got to experience this first along with us. See you next week.